Hi, this is Jim Craig with Planet of Mystery in the third of what I hope is just a three-part series on uh, using the Astroberry with your computer. This is essentially the Raspberry Pi 4 computer running uh, software. Uh, the software that we're using today is K-Stars, and inside of K-Stars we're using Ecos, which takes care of your telescope, can aim your telescope, take images, and store images. It's not for image processing. That's going to be a completely different series at some point that I'm going to work on. But right now what we're going to do is we're going to talk about taking a series of images. And in order to do that, the first thing we have to do is know how to guide our telescope. You can do long exposure astrophotography without a guide scope, but to be quite honest, you're going to run into some problems. Uh, if your telescope is not 100% perfectly polar aligned and your um, drive mechanism perfect, then you're going to get stars that instead of being nice tight little dots are going to be little streaks. And most telescopes for astrophotography today are equipped to be able to correct for little errors uh, when it comes to uh, doing astrophotography by having a second telescope attached and guiding using that. So we're going to start with guiding and that's the little planet symbol here. And what we're going to do is we're going to start by telling it we want to use the guide scope. Uh, it's going to automatically pick the proper camera. Okay, guider is guide simulator by a telescope simulator. We're going to have one second exposure. Now one thing I do is it has been set at 4x4. Four four. I set that to 2x2 two two maximum. That way I can get a wide enough field of view to see to see the stars to do guiding. So once you've got all that set up, all you have to do, we're just going to click guide. And it's going to take a, okay, it's taking an exposure. And you can see in that exposure, there's a star. And hopefully that star is going to be bright enough that it's going to be able to track on it. But it's correcting. See, right ascension reverse, right ascension drifting forward. It's calibrating. So you see this little yellow preparing. And that's going to take some time. Now it's checking declination backlash. And when it's calculated all of that, dec declination drifting forward, again, checking all of that, it's calculating, it's going to figure out um, the error here. I have guiding data, that sort of thing. And when it's finally centered, you're going to see on this target here how well it's guiding. It's also going to have a little readout here. And it's auto-guiding. It's that simple. Now again, this is using a simulator so we don't have the same issues that we might have using a real telescope. So you might have to pick a different star, in which case you'll just click on a different star. But you can see this. This thing is guiding perfectly. The RMS error is just down to fractions. Um, the signal to noise ratio it's not going to put in there because, well, we're not getting any noise because it's not a real camera. So there we've set up guiding, as simple as that. Now there is another way of doing guiding using an external piece of software called PHD2, which comes here and you can see the icon for it there. Uh, I'm not going to work on PHD2 right now because in my system, this works. So what we're going to do is we're gonna stop guiding and now we're going to set up an imaging system or uh, an imaging uh, session. So what we're going to do is we're going to come over here to the book well, actually, let's go to the camera first, and we're going to tell it we want 10 second exposures, 5 each. Well, instead of M42, we're going to do M1. And we're actually going to create a directory. So let's come here. There's a little star thing here. For new folder, we name it M1. And now double click on it, click choose. So it's going to save all of our images into a directory called M1, and all of our images should have a um, should have a prefix of M1. So now we've got we're going to do five each. We're going to do red, tell it and put it into the sequence queue. Green, put it into the sequence queue. Blue, put that into the sequence queue, and luminance and put that into the sequence queue. Now what we have to do is we have to save 
our capture sequence, and we're going to call it M1 demo. And we have to save that. Now we're going to open up the little book here. I'm going to tell it target, and we can actually click here, tell it M1, or let's type crab. Nope, it's not going to do it that way. So, okay, okay, we're going to do M1, which is the crab nebula. So, double click on M1, that is our target. For sequence, we're going to open up that sequence we just made, M1 demo sequence. Uh, I'm not going to put a FITS file with it, any priority. Now, because we are operating in daylight, we're going to have to change some things down here. First of all, we're going to have to turn off twilight, and it's going to give us a warning. At night, you don't have to do that. Let's see. Don't need the startup procedure. Aborted job management. And now we're going to add that to our job queue. Now, if you want to... And let's see. Tells us it's scheduled. Start time is pretty much any time we want. Now, if we wanted to, we could set up another one just like this. The way we did the multiple image captures, we could set up another one and have a queue and have an entire night to where all it all the telescope does is it captures images. Now there is one thing more thing I want to try to change here and this is called meridian flip and we want it to be see it says the meridian flip is in 25 minutes and what that means is so our telescope does not run into its own mount when the telescope goes when our target goes past the meridian which is due south which you can see it's right here and that's not that far from M1 it flips the telescope over so it doesn't run into its own mount. Tracking is on, so let's go back here. Oh, there's a couple other things. We don't need to do focus. So it's going to do track, align, and guide. So now let's take that one out and let's put... Anytime you make a change here, you have to... Um, you have to take out your uh, previous version of it and put in the changed version. Otherwise it will execute both of them or it won't do the thing that you changed. So I'm going to set this up as if it were really running a session. So we hit start scheduler. Scheduler started. And let's see if it says what the start time is. Okay, it's doing it. You can see over here, telescope simulator is moving over to M1. And now if we go over here in, uh, I'm going to come over here to the guider. Oh no, it's actually going to uh, start with a plate solve. Which happens here. And again, this takes some, it's going to take it a couple moments. And there's a distinct possibility it won't solve the plate. Target is within acceptable range. So now we come over here and you can see it's already started exposing the red image. It's going to go through and do all the rest. So it's as simple as that. Now if something goes wrong or you don't like the way it goes, and by the way it is going to bring up a preview here every time. There is a place in here where if you don't want to look at your preview images you can shut them off or shut it off. It won't open the FITS viewer every time it takes a picture. Like it keeps doing there. Or you can move the, fit, uh, the viewer to the back. If you decide you need to abort the sequence or something like that, just come over here. And just like uh, if you're doing a recording you don't like, just hit stop. So it's as simple as that to set up uh, an observing session. And again, you can pick multiple targets, um, multiple exposures. You can change your filters the way you want if you have filters. You can change all of that. I definitely recommend going to astroberry.io, reading through the documentation, um, there are Facebook groups, there are forums online, in uh, cloudy nights there are people who talk just about using Astroberry. So definitely check out those resources. Well, I, ho I hope you've enjoyed this series. I hope you find it useful. If you do, give me a thumbs up. And if you like what I do here, consider subscribing. Also, if you have any questions, please 
put them down in the comments and I will do my very best to answer those questions for you. So until you come back and see one of our, my other videos, this is Jim Craig saying thanks for watching and keep looking up.